Welcome to the first video on linguistic semantics. So we'll first start with talking about inferences, and there's several different types of inferences. In this video, we'll focus on entailment and talk about implication at a later date. But we can think about inferences as things that we infer or understand uh, what someone means when they say something. So let's say we have a sentence like, Gwen made a rock album and a rap album. There's a few facts we can take from this, and there's some things that we can infer that are being said. So a fact that we know, if Gwen made a rock album and a rap album, we know that Gwen made at least two albums. But we can also infer from this case, if Gwen made a rock album and a rap album, that Gwen has not made a country album. This is not necessarily a fact, because it could be that there's information being left out, but this is something that's probably true. And finally with C, if Gwen made a rock album and a rap album, then Gwen has made a rock album. This is also a fact. Uh, if she made two albums and we know what those two are, then we can isolate each of those as saying that, you know, Gwen has made each of those albums independently. So these are called inferences, and there's a different type between A and C and then B. So the ones that we're looking at are what are called entailments, and these are facts. So these are things that must be true based on the sentence that you're given, not things that are probably true. So we say that sentence A entails sentence B, if and only if B must be true when A is true. So imagine you have two sentences A and B, and you're saying that A is for sure a true sentence. So, all doctors save lives. If A entails B, this means that B is also going to be true because A is true. So, if I say that all doctors save lives, and that's a true statement, then any doctor saves lives. So, Dougie Hauser, who is a doctor, saves lives must then be true as well. So this is sort of like the all men are mortal, Socrates is a man, therefore Socrates is mortal argument in philosophy. Uh, here's another pair. I have exactly two dogs. Okay. If you have exactly two dogs, what that means is that you also have less than 400 dogs. You have more than zero dogs. You have less than five dogs. You have between negative 500 and 500 dogs. All of these are facts that arise from the fact that the first sentence is true. So uh, these are entailments, and these entailments are kind of a little silly, especially in number four here, but it just goes to show the point. These are ones where our, our intuition does really, really well. But there are some cases where our intuition might not do the best job that it can be. So we need some linguistic tests, some scientific tests, determine whether or not there's a tailment. And the first test that we can use, the main test you should be using, is called the contradiction test. Now, to set this up, what we know is that if A entails B, and this is the sign for entails, then if A is true, that means that B must be true. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a setup. We're going to assume that A entails B. We're going to make A true, but we're going to make B false. And we should be able to show that this is impossible. So if this is impossible, this must mean that B is true, and then we have an entailment relationship. So how can we see this in action? Well, let's say we have two sentences, Stefan is a grumpy actor, Stefan is an actor. So to do the A not B test, we're going to take sentence A, Stefan is a grumpy actor, and then we're going to add an and or a but in here, and we're going to negate the second sentence. So it is not true that Stefan is an actor. So that's the same thing as saying Stefan is not an actor, and I will highlight that in uppercase, so that way you can see this. Now, what happens when you read this new sentence? Stefan is a grumpy actor, but Stefan is not an actor. You're like, hold on a second, there's some sort of contradiction here, because you've said that he's an actor, but you've also said 
that he's not an actor. So which one is true? So because we have a contradiction here, we know that our B sentence cannot be false. So what we can conclude from this is that the sentence A does entail B. If Stefan is a grumpy actor, then Stefan is an actor. That factually is derived from the fact that Stefan is a grumpy actor. Now, if we don't find a contradiction, then it's very likely that we don't have entailment there. Well, it's certain that we don't have entailment there. So this is how we can use the contradiction test to verify our entailments. Now there's a secondary test you can use. This isn't a certain test, but it does give you a hint of what you're looking at. And this is called the redundancy test. So if a sentence A entails B, if you say A and B, it's going to sound a little bit redundant. And that's because if you know that A is true and B logically follows, you shouldn't need to say B because A already entails B. So when you add B to the sentence A, you're like, why are you repeating yourself? So let's use the A and B test here. So this would be, uh, what is happening? Stefan, I am in Japanese mode on my computer for some reason. Okay, Stefan is a grumpy actor and Stefan is an actor. So what happens when you read this sentence? Well, suddenly, it just sounds repetitive. Stefan is a grumpy actor and Stefan is an actor. As soon as you get to this point, Stefan is an actor, you're asking the question like, why? Why did you say that again? You already know that he's an actor, so why would you repeat it? So what this implies is that it's likely an entailment. It could still be an implication, which we'll talk about in a future video, but this is a good hint of what you should be looking for. So I use the example Stefan is a grumpy actor, therefore Stefan is an actor because it's also intuitive and then we can see how the tests work and get intuition from that. So that way when you do other problems, which we'll do in a second, you'll be able to apply them even if your intuition originally does not seem quite quite all there. So here are the practice problems. Does A entail B? I'm going to make a little bit of room below each one just so that way we can do our little sentences here. So 6a, Saki and Tanaka are married. Saki and Tanaka are married to each other. Now this is one of those inferences in real life where if you heard someone say Saki and Tanaka are married, you would think that they're married to each other. But let's apply the A and not B test. So we have Saki and Tanaka are married, but now we're going to negate, so it is not the case that Saki and Tanaka are married to each other, which we can paraphrase as Saki and Tanaka are not married to each other. Do we get a contradiction here? Saki and Tanaka are married, but Saki and Tanaka are not married to each other. No, this sentence is totally fine. There is no contradiction here. It just doesn't follow conversational expectations. So what we can conclude here is that A does not entail B. There is no relationship here. So this is does not entail. It certainly implies that they're married to each other, but it doesn't entail that they're married to each other. Let's try another one. Steve is the best guitar player. Does that entail that Steve is the best musician? Well, let's do this. So Steve is the best guitar player, but it is not the case that Steve is the best musician. So Steve is not the best musician. So is this good or bad? Steve is the best guitar player, but Steve is not the best musician. Well, this is fine to me too, because he's the best guitar player, but he's not the best musician. He's not the best music player. So he's like the best in a, in a smaller domain. So this also implies or tells us that A does not entail B in this case. Now 8 is an interesting one. Some dogs are happy. Does that entail that some happy things are dogs? And this is where we have to be careful with the negation test. So I've been paraphrasing this as putting not like right after the verb. 
but this doesn't work the case in all times. So really what we should be doing in this one for A and not B, we should say some dogs are happy, but, and then write, it is not the case that, and then put our sentence B, some happy things are dogs. Because when we rewrite this sentence, some dogs are happy, but we're going to get a slightly different wording. We're not going to get some happy things are not dogs. What we're going to get is it is not the case that some happy things are dogs. This means that no happy things are dogs. You can definitely paraphrase a lot, but you should be careful that when you say it is not the case that something, it does paraphrase to putting the not after the verb. So what do we get here? Some dogs are happy, but no happy things are dogs. Well, this is going to give us a contradiction in each of these cases. It's just paraphrases of the same thing. If some dogs are happy, we know that if there's some dogs here and there's some happy things, there should be some stuff in the middle of those. So happy things that are also dogs. But when you say that no happy things are dogs, what this means is that dogs and happy things are totally separate entities. There's no overlap. So these contradict with each other. Therefore, A is going to entail B. If you say that some dogs are happy and that's true, that's going to entail that some happy things are dogs. So I show you these examples just because some of these mess a little bit with your intuition. I mean, specifically 6A does because conversational norms. So according to convex uh, conversational norms or convo norms, conventional norms, you could say that too. When you say a sentence like Saki and Tanaka are married, it's implied that they're married to each other. That's what we expect. However, entailment is not about what we expect. Entailment is about what's logically true. So it doesn't have to be logically true that they're married to each other. It's only an expectation. So hopefully this video helps you understand entailment and linguistics. If you have any questions, leave them below. And like, comment, subscribe. Uh, do all that other fun stuff. And I hope to see you in the next one.